welcome to News Now. I am Fidelia Agoncha. The identity of Nigeria's leader for the next four years has finally been unveiled. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari has been declared winner of the presidential elections, defeating major opposition candidate Atiku Abubakar. Buhari emerged winner in 19 states to displace Atiku, who won 18 states, including the Federal Capital Territory. According to the final result announced by INEC, Buhari polled a total of 15,191,847 15, votes against Atiku's 11,262,978 votes. Adishima Odushaga tells us more. After a series of persuasions from 73 political parties in the last three months, Nigerians have now chosen the number one citizen for the next four years. Polling over 15 million votes in 36 states, including the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, incumbent President Muhammad Buhari, who is also the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, has been declared winner of the 2019 presidential elections. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Mahmoud Yakubu, made the official announcement after the collation of the election result at the National Collation Center in Abuja. I, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, hereby certify that I was the returning officer for the presidential election held on the 23rd day of February. 2019, that the election was contested, that Muhammad Buhari of the All Progressives Congress, having satisfied the requirements of the law and scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared winner and is returned elected. Reacting to the victory of the incumbent president, the spokesman of the APC Presidential Campaign Council, Festos Kiyamo expressed his gratitude to many Nigerians who voted Buhari for a second term. I just want to first of all thank the people of Nigeria uh, for seeing um, through the, um, the heart, for seeing the heart and the mind of the president and believing in him, uh, giving him a second term. Uh, we want to thank them for having faith in the president and the um, the assurances he gave Nigerians as to what he would do in um, the second term. But having said that, we also want to um, let the opposition know, the main opposition, that um, this is um, our country, they are patriots also, they fought a good fight, um, we are all Nigerians, we have no other country, and uh, they should um, not let personal ambition um, surpass national and varied national interests. The results of the presidential elections, however, did not go down well with the major opposition party. The chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Uche Secondos, is questioning the credibility of the polls. I want to categorically state that our coalition centers have all original results from every polling unit in Nigeria in every ward and in every local government area of which the international community is well aware, implying all results currently being announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is incorrect, thus unacceptable to our party and the people. Well, amidst these controversies, a civil society organization, Yaga Africa, watching the vote, WTV, says it has verified the official result of the 2019 presidential elections as announced by Independent National Electoral Commission and has certified it is correct. The group made these observations during the 2019 presidential election results verification press conference in Abuja. In the post-election period, Yaga Africa reiterates it calls to all political parties to better align their policies and actions with the interests of the Nigerian people. Nigeria's most valuable resource is its diverse population, including women, 
youth, and persons living with disability until political parties nominate candidates and put forth policies that reflect the interests and diversity of the general public, Nigeria's democracy will not move forward. As President Mohamed Buhari prepares to be sworn in for a second term in office, Nigerians are in high expectancy of the fulfillment of the party's next level campaign promises. Adeshiwa Odushoga, TV360 Nigeria. While well, reacting to this good news, President Muhammad Buhari has thanked Nigerians for re-electing him for a second term in office. The president in his acceptance speech said he is humbled by the support of citizens who came out to vote for him during the polls. He has promised to do his best to take the nation to the next level with the opportunity given to him. I thank the millions of Nigerians who voted to re-elect me as your president for the next four years. I am deeply humbled and profoundly grateful to you for judging me worthy of continuing to serve you for your peaceful conduct. In particular, I would like to thank Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. for his masterful leadership as co-chair of the Campaign Council. I would like to also thank the party chairman, Adam Zashomale, <laughs> the director general of the Campaign Council, Rotimi Amechi, <laughs> all members of the Presidential Campaign Council and other various support groups. Although Saturday's elections were relatively peaceful, troublemakers in a handful of states attempted to disrupt an otherwise orderly process. Security agencies will bring to justice all those arrested in the process. I am very sad at the grievous loss of lives during these elections. Security agencies will step up their efforts to protect the voters in the forthcoming state elections. The new administration will intensify its efforts in security, restructuring the economy, and fighting corruption. We have laid down the foundation, and we are committed to seeing matters to the end. We will strive to strengthen our unity and inclusiveness so that no section or group will feel left behind or left out. And still on President Muhammad Buhari's victory, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has presented the certificate of return to Nigeria's president-elect. Chairman of the Commission, Mahmoud Yakubu, made the presentation at the Collation Center in Abuja on Wednesday. President Buhari, in his speech after receiving the certificate, urged all Nigerians, irrespective of their political affiliation, to work together for the growth of the nation. The president will begin his second term in office after his inauguration in May 29, on May 29, 2019. Now that the elections are over and the winner declared, we must all see each as a victory for Nigeria, our dear country. That is why I am thank my team and supporters in a speech I made earlier today, not to note. Our God-given victory is enough cause for joy without crying with those who are in the opposition. All Nigerians going forward must stand in brotherhood for a bright and fulfilling future. I therefore want to assure that we will continue to engage all parties that have the best interests of Nigerians at heart. Our government will remain inclusive and our doors will remain open. That is the way to build the country of our dream. Safe, secure, 
refers a degree of impunity and permitted accumulation by those interested in suffering offices. I can assure you, I can assure you that you will see a country moving to the next level for our, for our fundamental areas of securing the country, reviving the economy and fighting corruption. Many other focal areas, as stated in our campaign manual, will be added to the good things we plan for our country. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiko Abubakar, has rejected the result of the presidential election. Reacting in a statement, Atiko said there were manifest and uh, premeditated malpractices in many states which negate the results announced. He adds that one obvious red flag in the statistical impossibility of states ravaged by the war on terror, gener on terror generating much higher voter turnout than peaceful states. He is also alleging that the disruption of voting in strongholds of the PDP in Lagos, Aquaibom, Rivers and some other states affected the result. The former vice president has now vowed to seek justice the democratic way by heading to court to challenge the result. Well, amidst the celebration by supporters of the Buhari-led administration, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Olisa Agbakoba, has advised Atiku Abubakar presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, not to challenge the election results. In a piece titled 2019 Presidential Election, Ethnic Consideration versus Governance Consideration, Agbakova said Atiku is in a position to champion the much-needed political and um, electoral reforms in the country. He adds, quote, I can see how tempting it is to take the, the option of the election petition tribunal, but that, in my view, is not the right decision, end of quote. Atiku lost the presidential election to incumbent President Muhammad Buhari of the All Progressives Congress in a keenly fought contest. The PDP candidate has, however, rejected the result, arguing that the election was not free or fair. While another presidential candidate has reacted to the result of the presidential election, flag bearer of the Providence People's Congress, Victor Okai, is also challenging the credibility of the results, saying it was marred by electoral malpractices. Under normal circumstances, one would have thought that the election was well conducted, but with the events leading up to it, um, the credibility of the election has been eroded. First of all, with the uh, almost, if you like, deliberate, uh, pre, um, con I mean, uh, pre-planned. Um, uh, action of removing the Chief Justice of the Federation um, and then the issue of the delay and then of course in the, in the release of the results and, the, and, and also the postponement of the election it left so many things to be desired. We saw a lot of padding of results, we saw visuals of people thumbprinting whole booklets, you know, we saw cases in the north where there were no accreditations, we saw underage voters and all of that, and it has made the whole election and taken away every, every credibility that could have been in it. I'm not very satisfied with the result. I do not think it's a true reflection of the wishes and aspirations of, of Nigerians. Judging by what has happened in the last four years, um, I do not think that Nigerians would have voted this way. Um, would the incumbents still have won? Maybe. Maybe not, but um, with, with the level of manipulation by the government, I, 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 I'm not satisfied with, with the way things have turned out. Well, despite grievances from opposition candidates, West Africa leaders have started felicitating with President Muhammadu Buhari. In a statement released on Wednesday morning, South Africa President Cyril Ramaphosa congratulated Buhari and Nigerians for his victory and a successful conduct of the polls. Buhari has also received the felicitation of Senegalese Maki Sao, Ghana's Nana Akufu Adu, and Niger's Mohamedou Isufu. Well, in the same vein, Nigerian leaders and political gladiators have also been felicitating with the president-elect. National leader of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and other party stalwarts have congratulated the president on his victory saying Nigerians have made the right choice.
No matter how atrocious it is, if I coach this president clearly uh, some weeks back, he said the difficult thing we have chosen for them, for ourselves, is a democratic system of governance. And it is very difficult. It could be tough to us. And there must always be a winner and a loser. It's intolerance that we should build ourselves and prepare always for it. The result of this free and fair election has been clear. INEC has done a fantastic job. Through reflection of Nigerians and appreciation of what Muhammad Buhar has done for the past four years. It's had just about getting to about four years in office and you can see the strides that have been achieved and I believe the votes that he received today through the declaration is an indication that they are expecting much more from him. Uh, the level of confidence expressed uh, is, is so high. And it comes with a greater responsibility and I believe he has totally resolved in his heart to ensure that the lives of the people of this country are changing in the next four years. I feel very happy and, and pleased and I'm, I believe strongly that I'm speaking the minds of all Nigerians that this uh, re-election is worth it and uh, of course it means that Nigeria will continue to have respect in the community of states. And many of us have lost our voices during the campaigns and we are excited that God has rewarded us with their success. Uh, we believe strongly that President Muhammad Buhari has a lot to offer the country. And like I said always, I've always said it, I said the question then is integrity. It's one of the happiest days for us in Nigeria because this exercise has indicated Nigerians have actually acknowledged and appreciated the efforts the government of President Muhammad Bahari has been doing since 2015 to now, especially in the areas of security, economic recovery, and fighting corruption. Well, in Lagos State, leaders of the All Progressives Congress have also been congratulating the president on its victory. Publicity Secretary of the ruling party, Joe Ibukwe, while congratulating the president-elect, described the polls as free and fair. In the same vein, former PDP chairman and coordinator of uh, the Buhari Oshibaja support group in Lagos State, Moshud Salvador, says um, President Buhari's triumph means victory for every Nigerian. Good for the Commonwealth. Good for Nigeria, good for everybody. Because integrity, honesty won that election. That's what New York, New, New York Times said. Balance of war against corruption, sustenance of infrastructure development across Nigeria. There's no state in Nigeria where something is not happening. Building our railways, probably giving us the national career. Building more roads, opening Nigeria. That's what we expect. More investment in agriculture, more investment in security. You know, and, and you know, creating jobs for people. When, when, when they are winning, it's no region. By the time you win, it's no Go and check Buhari's record since 2003. He has always got 12 million votes. And that is not, it's not West, not Central. And this time he added, he added Southwest and he won. That's what Achuaji told us. He has been scoring 12 million votes. 13, 14 from those zones. So it's his zone. Nobody is contesting that place with him. See, this is every election year, that's what you see. That figure is what you see from Kano. Once Kano lands and they have the population and they, they will travel to vote. They're not like us. They can stay in the sun for 10 hours to do what they want to do. They're not like us. Yeah, we are at least, we don't come to vote. They see vote as, as, a, as a sacrifice, as a ritual that they need to do. So, if you go and check the history, you will see. The only vote that were added is South, Southwest. And Southwest has population also. So that is... And in Abuja, sounds of jubilation erupted following the announcement of President Muhammad Buhari as the winner of Saturday's presidential election. Youths in the FCT trooped to the streets to celebrate the president's victory, riding on motorcycles and tricycles they marched along the Amadubelo Highway from Area 1 part of the city 
to central area. Meanwhile, across the city, Nigerians have been reacting to the outcome of the election and uh, they have been expressing their expectations for the next four years. Their reaction to the announcement of President Muhammad Buhari as the president-elect was spontaneous. They have waited all night for the announcement to come, and now their candidate has eventually emerged victorious. It was a frenzy mood as they danced through the long stretch of Amadu Belo Way. Meanwhile, some other Nigerians have also been reacting to the development. Politics is politics. Uh, a lot of comfort zones are hot. A lot of people who had uh, thought the other way around uh, will be disappointed. But uh, to a large extent, uh, there's need for magnanimity and victory. There's need to democratize this victory across board so that uh, you know, a good uh, level of uh, you know, governance will be achieved to avoid a lot of distractions and all whatnot. Everybody knows APC next slogan is next level. So next level means we're going there. We're working all the way to ensure that you know, we have sustainable development projects to enrich and empower the lives of the less citizens of Nigeria and to take Nigeria to the next level. What we do expect in the next four years is for him to redouble on what he has started, the fight against corruption and, and of course, infrastructure, which of course, as we have been begging for for a very long time. And, um, some other things that are non-noticeable that Mr. President has embarked on. So generally, I personally want Mr. President to redouble his effort on the fight against corruption and of course infrastructure. To work more on his policies to make Nigeria better uh, and um, like last week we got the news that we were now the best economy in Africa. We want, to we want him to consolidate on that. Make uh, uh, people who have a very minimal livelihood to be able to at least have a chance to live as very good Nigerians who have the belief that Nigeria will work. I'm very, I believe so much in Nigeria. I know that Nigeria will be, will, will be better than this one. In unemployment, practically, um, if we are looking at um, the role of government when it has to do with unemployment in the nation, it is also pari pursu private individuals as well. So it's, it's that government should learn to um, partner with the private sector alongside um, the policies that government bring up should be favorable to the private sector, should be favorable for every um, young Nigerian to, um, impl um, to actually actualize whatever dream, whatever vision they have, policies, do you understand? So when it affects unemployment, it's not that government is meant to provide all the jobs, but policies that are giving enough room for youths to express their giftings, express their talent, whatever it is that they have to do. And then a, par, um, a partnership pari pursue with the private sector is just what we expect from the next um, Government. As jubilation continues in many parts of Abuja, Nigerians are hoping that the next four years will place the country on an irreversible path of development. Only at Dekunle, TV360, Jim. Our well, news now will continue in just a moment. Don't go away. Corruption not in my country. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, madam. Uh, my name is Alero. I am not sick. I just need you to help put your stamp on this medical report. I, I want to tender it at my office as a sick leave. I'll pay 10,000 Naira. Uh, Ma'am, that is impersonation. I'm not a doctor. Oga, be like say this English, no go pay. I go increase the money to 20,000 Naira, eh? I beg. You know, eh? If I give you that 20,000, as you, as you wide, so, eh? You know, if it still help your condition more. So, <laughs> you don't say you spread the well, uh, eh? As I spread like virus, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you talking? <laughs> oh, 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 hey. If first you come to your hospital, talk to me, you give a fake medical report, make you go take cholesterol leave. Talk and say, no, not nah, corruption. Not in my country. Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now.
Welcome back. Well, let's now talk business with Oin Adekunle. Hello, Oin. Hi, Fidelia. So what do you have for us today? Now, foreign exchange flows through the economy have resulted in a net inflow of $12.10 billion at the last quarter of 2018, compared with $22.54 billion in the corresponding period of 2017. This translates to a fall of $8.44 billion in the period under review, according to the fourth quarter report on foreign exchange flow by the Central Bank of Nigeria, favorable international price and increased domestic production of crude oil, however, strengthened the external sector in the fourth quarter of 2018. The decline in outflow relative to the preceding quarter reflected the fall in interbank utilization, external debt service, Forex special payment and SDR charges. Now, stock market review is up next right after this break. Please stay tuned. day of loss at the Nigeria Stock Exchange as investors' confidence remained doubted despite an end to uncertainty surrounding the results of the presidential election. The market in the past three days has declined by over 170 billion naira in value with the all share index shedding 456 points. Bearing the brunt of the loss today is Nestle, which leads the pack of losers yet again, this time dropping by 10 naira to close at 0.66% with a 0.66% loss. It is also followed by Unilever, Zenith Bank, and Oando, who also saw more sell offs than buys during trading today. Moving on to the top. Moving on now, on the flip side, it was a swell day for, for PZ Cousins, Julius Berger, Union Bank of Nigeria PLC, and Nascon Applied PLC. In summary, over 5,000 deals worth 2.6 billion naira exchange earns on the market today. On the foreign scene, FTSE is in the reds, largely dragged down by stocks of retail company Max and Spencer, which slumps following the announcement of a food delivery deal with Okado Supermarket. The stocks of Dow also dipped by 0.38%, while Nikkei managed to keep its head above water, closing with a 0.50% a increase. That's all on Stock Market's review today. It's back to you, Fidelia. Thank you so much. Since uh, the election um, is clouding the sentiment of investors uh, on the stock market, and that's the Nigeria stock market. But moving on, no fewer than 20 people have died after a ferry train crashed in Cairo's main railway station on Wednesday. The accident, which sparked a major blaze at the Ramses station, also injured 40 other people. Egyptians have long complained that the government has failed to deal with chronic transport problems in the country where roads are as poorly maintained as rail lines. The official statistics energy um, agency actually says there were 1,793 train accidents in 2017. And to sports organizers of the Nigeria Professional Football League and PFL have released new dates for many of its rescheduled fixtures disrupted by postponed national elections in the country. NPFL added that the continental engagement of lobby stars and Rangers International also affected the fixture date. The league first stanza was due to end on Wednesday according to the season's schedule and calendar, but the games were postponed indefinitely. Now four matches will kick off on Sunday, March 3rd, including lobby stars' home tie with Katsina United in Makodi. And that's it on news now. Thank you so much for watching. I am Fidelia Agoncha. Bye for now.